comes to mitigation assistance. If I'm going too fast, somebody just holler and, and uh, type in. So HMGP is post-disaster grants available to states after a presidential declaration. So this last year, 17, we had several presidential disasters declared. And then, of course, this year we had a couple, too. So those come up periodically. Hopefully we never have them. But uh, fortunately, we have this program available for when they do become, um, when we do have disasters. The pre-disaster mitigation and flood mitigation assistance, those are appropriated annually by Congress. And every year, the dollar amount changes. And these are competitive nationwide. Whereas HMGP is only we only compete with uh, jurisdictions within the state. So these are our different roles that uh, FEMA plays in Cal OES. They provide the guidance and technical assistance to the states and local jurisdictions. Cal OES is the agent state agency that processes all the FEMA uh, grants. Uh, we provide the uh, solicit projects. We assist the sub applicants with developing their application. We review them, we score them for eligibility and completeness, and then we submit them to FEMA. And then once they're awarded, we then monitor the, the grant to make sure that the subrecipient is fulfilling the role that the grant is uh, was intended for. So they're not building bridges to nowhere. Eligible sub-applicants would be state agencies. They're available under all three programs. Tribal governments, available under all three programs. And then local governments and communities under all three programs. Now, local governments and communities can apply on behalf of individuals, like individual homeowners. For instance, if you wanted to do an elevation project, the local government, probably the county or the city, would apply on the homeowner's behalf. There were several projects down south where they did a fire-resistant uh, project where they, a whole community um, applied under the county. And they redid all the roofs in that local community to fire resistant material to make them more fire resistant. So even though it doesn't say that private individuals aren't eligible, they apply through the local governments. And then certain nonprofit organizations are eligible. And this is the key. This is the key to getting money from FEMA. Every local jurisdiction has to have a FEMA approved and locally adopted local hazard mitigation plan. Ideally, um, the county would have a plan that would cover the entire county, but that's not always the case. So you'll have a county plan, and then the cities may have a plan, and then some special districts may have their own plan, depending on, on the certain circumstances. But if you don't have a locally approved and uh, FEMA approved and locally adopted uh, local hazard mitigation plan, you're not eligible for funding under the HMA program. Um, the nice thing is, is you can actually get a grant to help you develop a local hazard mitigation plan. So I think I go over that here uh, shortly. So some of the cost share requirements, most of our grant programs are 75-25 split, where the feds put up 75 and the locals have to put up a 25% match. Where it becomes a little different is under the flood mitigation assistance the idea here is to get rid of repetitive loss properties or severe repetitive loss properties, and they'll fund up to 100% to help mitigate those problems. Now, the nice thing about the 25%, it doesn't have to be cash out of pocket. It doesn't have to, like the local community doesn't have to come up with the entire money out of, as cash. It can be in-kind services, such as volunteers, um, donated supplies, a whole myriad of in-kind, third-party type, um, funding can come together to make up that 25%. The salaries of the people that are managing the grant um, can be included in that 25%. So when you start thinking about it on those levels, it's a little easier to come up with a match than just to come up with, if you have a $4 million project, to come up with 25% of that in cash. If you start factoring in all the volunteer services and in-kind salaries and things of that nature, it's a lot easier to come up with the 25% match. And David, let me know if I'm going too fast here. Is, every, is the pace okay? You're doing great. Okay. So these are some of the eligible activities. Um, for those of you in the floods, the first couple are property acquisition, and uh, where they ac actually acquire the property and then demolish it and make it open space, green space. 
And the nice thing about that is there has to be a restriction. There's no more building that can be done on that space. Um, they could make it into a park um, with some limited, you know, bathrooms and stuff, but it has to be no longer developed. And the same thing with property acquisition and structural relocation. So we actually move the structure to a different location. These are probably the two ideal flood mitigations because once you remove the building or the structure from the flood zone, you never have to worry about it again. Then another popular one is structure elevations. This is where the local communities will work with the homeowners and either they'll do one house or they'll do several houses in a community. Usually once one person gets their house elevated and they realize the next time they got flooded, everybody else jumps on board. Um, then we have mitigation reconstruction, flood proofing, uh, stream rest restoration, then we go into soil stabilization and minor flood control. These are just some of the projects that are on the list. Um, some more projects, drainage improvement, wind retrofits, which we don't do too much out here in California. Uh, wildfire mitigation, those would be like defensible space, fuel reduction, um, construction, fire resistant construction type things. We'll fund backup generators, uh, not the portable ones, but the ones actually designed um, to be a backup generator to a, a critical facility. Um, we don't do too many hurricane safe rooms here in, in California. but uh, And then the 5% projects, this is projects under the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, disaster grants, where the benefit cost analysis, that's something you have to do when you present a project, the benefit cost analysis has to be one or greater. That means for every dollar spent, you're saving a dollar. Um, some programs, some projects are kind of hard to calculate the benefit cost, so they can be funded under the 5% initiative program. And then one of the uh, categories that's not up here that I kind of like, it's a miscellaneous category. Um, sometimes people kind of get set, they have a list of uh, eligible projects and they kind of get stuck in that mode and don't start thinking outside the box. So they actually have a miscellaneous category that may not be your typical project, but as long as it meets the needs of the community and mitigates a problem and saves lives and property, it can be considered for uh, PDM, FMA, or HMGP funding. And then we also fund hazard mitigation plans. That's, that's the key to get funding is having a local, local plan. Some of the ineligible activities is, of course, any project that does not reduce the risk to people, structures, or infrastructure. Um, another thing with projects have to be independent of each other, meaning you can't build part of a levy, and because the other part of the levy is not finished, it doesn't fix the problem. They have to fix the problem as an individual project. Um, a big one is physical work cannot occur before the award. And this is a biggie. If you start construction, you put a shovel in the ground, unfortunately, you know, that project is no longer available for, for funding. It has to be done before the project. Um, let's see, some other uh, preparedness measures and response equipment. Um, you would think that fire engines and things that nature would be funded under a disaster grant, but our goal here is mitigation and fire engines and things of that nature are all response as opposed to um, mitigation. And even though it says major structural projects like levee dam and et cetera, that's referring to maintenance of levees dams, not the actual um, repair of damage to because of disasters or um, repair of seismic, like seismically retrofitting the dam. And here's a couple of examples of an, here's an elevation, that looks like on the coast, and then a drainage improvement project. And here's a before and after picture taken from different angles, of course, where they improved the drainage. Um, they put in um, some rocks to prevent erosion. They also put in some barriers to stop the flow of the water from uh, racing down the, the culvert there. No, actually it's not a culvert, but the drainage canal there. Then here's some erosion control where they line the banks with stones to prevent the erosion. These are just some typical examples. And here's a seismic retrofit. There's two types of seismic retrofit. You can retrofit the building to make it structurally sound, and then there's a retrofit where you can go in and secure all the uh, furniture and equipment inside the building, like bolting, filing cabinets to the wall, 
uh, bolting different things so they don't, when they actually have an earthquake, they don't then become a hazard and fall and hurt people inside the building. And then in the far there, you could probably see some rocks where they kind of protect it from the, the wave action there. And then here's wildfire mitigation. Um, the picture on the left is roofing material that's fire resistant. This is a big project they did down south with a, a whole community, I think there's like 50 homes, where they replaced all the roofs from the wood shingles to this uh, um, shake or, or rock type roof material to make them more fire resistant. Another um, fire mitigation is defensible space. And then where they actually remove vegetation around the house. And then they also have fuel reduction where they go in and, and clear out some of the brush and make it a little bit less, remove the fuel so it doesn't have the ignition source to keep the fires burning. There's some in innovative ideas. Uh, they actually use goats for uh, fuel reduction. It's a, a viable and a grant that uh, has been funded. Um, David and I were talking about this log jam uh, project. We don't think they do this too much often anymore. And then using jute netting for probably erosion control and stuff after fires. That's something big that they're going to have to be concerned this after the fires, now that all the vegetation's coming and then the rain's going to come in, um, erosion and landslides and debris flow is going to be a big issue coming up here this winter. So here's some funding opportunities. The Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, which is a disaster. It's the one we just had, the summer wildfires. The Notice of Interest has opened up on August 20th. And the deadline to submit the Notice of Interest is October 5th. Now, the Notice of Interest is really kind of a down and dirty um, mini application. It's basically saying who you are, what the jurisdiction is, what community you're going to serve, what the problem is and what your solution is and how much it's going to cost. It's pretty much what gets put into a notice of interest. Um, notice of interest are then screened to make sure that the applicant is eligible, that they have a current plan, that they're a local government or local jurisdiction, and that their project meets the eligibility, eligibility requirements in the hazard mitigation assistance guidance. And then once that's been approved, then you're um, sent notice that you're going to be asked to submit a complete FEMA application from that point forward. And that's where you get into a little bit more detailed uh, scope of work, more detailed schedule, and um, have to come up with your benefit cost analysis. Currently, the available statewide agency funding, we don't have a, a limit yet. We're accepting projects of any amount um, for funding. And then again, our federal share is 25% or 75% federal, 25% local. For pre-disaster, this is the one that was just announced um, here in August. We have a deadline of September 24th for the NOI. And then the e-grants application, once we have submitted that, will be December 3rd. There is a limit on the projects. It's $4 million federal share. So you can't overmatch if you have a, a large project. At least you can get up to $4 million from the federal government. For local housing mitigation plans, we do have a limit for $125,000 for a single jurisdiction or updated, and $250,000 for a multi-jurisdictional plan. And that's the multi-jurisdictions where the county and the cities and some of the local spe special districts get together and create one plan, which is, in our opinion, more ideal because more people are covered than doing a single individual plan. And then, of course, the cost share is 75-25. Flood mitigation assistance is pretty much just like pre-disaster. The deadlines are the same. We do have, um, I do have another slide on the community flood projects. This year, what came out new is FEMA is looking for community-wide large projects. And they're willing to fund up to $10 million for these community-wide projects where they get where you get the private sector, probably some state agencies, local communities together and develop a project that is broader in scope than just the onesie twosie elevations and 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 relocations and acquisitions. They're looking for a, a big major project to fund. And they're gonna um, we can submit one application under FMA for ten million and one under PDM for ten million. I think that's the next one actually. So this is a community-wide project. So if any of you know of any 
projects that have been in the works for a while that need some large funding, this would be a good um, opportunity to present to possibly get funded for that. Um, on our website, which is coming up here a little bit later, you'll see the link to our website that has a fact sheet on the $10 million program and what type of projects. Actually, I think I go into what type of projects. So basically, infrastructure protective measures, utility protective measures, uh, water and sanitary sewer, localized <laughs> flood control, storage, stormwater management, aquifer storage. I mean, they're looking for large projects to um, more of a community-wide as opposed to the onesie twosies. Then this is a kind of a pilot program, the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program post-fire. This came about when we have the fire Fire Management Assistance, the FMAX, they call them FMAX, when there's a locally a fire like we just had, they'll provide money to help fight the fire. And then what FEMA said, okay, we want to fix this from happening in the future. So they, over a period of time, I think it ends, started last year and it ends in September, they calculated how many FMAX or Fire Management Assistance grants that they had. And they came up with a number and now we have, can apply for this post-fire mitigation um, grant money that became available in the priority courses, wildfire related hazards. Although it is available for any risk reduction out there. We haven't posted um, an NOI on this particular grant opportunity yet, but kind of keep an eye on the website, which is later on, and you should see, be able to see that when we do post it. So advanced assistance. This is something new to pre-disaster flood mitigation. In the HMGP program, the Disaster Advanced Assistance was available. It wasn't available under PDM, uh, Pre-Disaster Flood Mitigation. So this year, FEMA came out and said, okay, we're going to allow you um, to provide advanced assistance, which is basically helping jurisdictions or giving them funding to develop their applications. Sometimes it can be pretty expensive to do engineering designs, do benefit cost analysis, and things of that nature. So they designed this to allow us to help the local jurisdictions have the money to develop an application for a good project. So um, federal share is still 75.25. We haven't set a cap on what the advanced assistance dollar amount could be. We're limited by the state. We can submit up to 200,000. So it's not a lot of money, but um, it's better than none. And it can help you. There's no benefit cost analysis required for those. Some of the eligible activities is to collect data for the BCAs, do cost estimate, estimations, obtain staff resources, conduct engineering designs, uh, hydraulic, hy hydraulic and can't even say that word. Anyway, for mapping purposes, um, it's to help prepare the application for a good viable project. So here's kind of an outline of what you would need for the NOI on a minor scale and then on, on the, a more detailed scale for the applications, a good scope of work, a schedule and a cost estimate. And they should all align with each other. So your scope of work and your schedule should kind of match and then your cost estimate for the work to be done. The Hazard Mitigation Assistance Guidance has a really good layout of, of what needs to be in each of these items. And if you just kind of follow the guidance and answer the questions or answer, uh, the bullet points in the HMA, you'll end up with a good application. Um, of course, they need to be feasible and cost effective, and most docu most projects have to go through some sort of environmental and historical preservation <coughs> review. So those are the main elements in an application. And here's the hazard mitigation program the guidance I was talking about. It's available online. You just type in FEMA hazard mitigation assistance grant or guidance, and it'll come up. The latest version is uh, February 27, 2015. Um, it is the latest version, and it's basically FEMA's interpretation of the Code of Federal, Federal Regulations. So it's kind of in layman's terms. It's a fairly easy read and pretty easy to find the information in there. And here's our contact information. So we have, we just recently, the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program and the Pre-Disaster Flood, Mitig Flood Mitigation Division were separate here at Cal OES. 
two di totally different divisions, and recently we just merged and became the Hazard Mitigation Assistance Branch. So we currently have two different emails up here, a group email, and then you'll see the four ma uh, management team for the different programs. So any one of those emails will work. Um, and I'm ready for questions.